What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday. I hope you did a good week. How do you like that? Good. Good for you. Good for me. Good for everybody. It's the, what the hell is today? It's Friday. I just said that twice now. Uh, we're starting. We're going. We're moving. We're grooving. I got a lot of shit to say, stuff to say. I start out with a curse. Shouldn't do that. I had somebody uh, say to me, you know, thank you for cleaning it up. I got my kids. So what did I do? I said, thank you to you, and I throw out something right away. So hopefully the kid doesn't start saying that around the house. If so, stick some soap in his mouth while you're cleaning. It's like a Christmas story. How are you? Great. <laughs> That's where we're going today. Um, got a lot of stuff to talk about. We're doing She-Hulk episode three. It's just me and Winston today, which will be good. I don't know. Maybe Winston's not in the room, and I'm just imagining it all. Maybe I'm dreaming. Who knows? It's possible. Anything's possible. Anything is possible. Who's that? Kevin Garnett? Look at that. I'm just like revisiting thoughts in my head. Um, I hope that you're having a great one. We have other stuff we're going to talk about in the comic book movie world. Uh, there's stuff that is happening. Spider-Man, the re-release. There's more uh, cameos going on in She-Hulk and other things that are popping up. And D23 is next week. That's going to be such a massive story. There's going to be so much to talk about once that hits. So, a couple things to tell you guys before we start. That Patreon, man, it is launched. I am officially on my own, everybody. For uh, I, As I told people, people like, I thought you were on your own. Nope. I was on my own for about two months after I left Collider. And then I took a position with Skyman Entertainment. Was very happy with them. Loved working with them. They were nothing but incredible to me and and um, without them I don't think we could have survived the schmodown as long as we did and I, I'm so grateful to them but I am on my own and I left and my Patreon is now the Big Thing Show Patreon and you can the link is in the description we, we have a lot of really great things that I'm working on with PLD if you don't know PLD we have some um, I, I'm, I'm really happy with a lot of stuff there's a rewatch series there's going to be exclusive Q&A Schmo's no old school content is going to be up there memorabilia from the Schmodown tons of it so we hope that you if you want to support that's how you do it you can do that and we also obviously we got the big thing clips channel that's up there if you haven't checked out out already please do that Spotify Apple podcast all of it. we got a lot going on, man. As, as I told you about the Clips channel, you can go on over there, and that's where we are. we got more to talk about, but it is the Big Thing episode. It's Capes and Cows, everybody. It's me. It's Winston. Let's do it. Come on. Welcome back, one and all, to Capes and Cows. There he is. Oh, wait, your head's too close. We didn't really check the. We didn't no, check, I didn't the, check yours. It's fine. It's whatever. Fine. I'm gonna fix you know, it. Yeah, I'm gonna fix it. Fix what we do. Also, you have mastered stream of thought, sir. Thank you. Holy. I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to chill because you, you said it, the babies. Well, you did I it. almost. I almost did it. Um, I was like impressed. You, Kevin Garnett got in there. I don't know how he got in there. Dream, dream sequences. You went yeah. full Inception for a minute. I had like, a stroke. I, just, I had a stroke. That's what happened. Uh, checks out. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, so we're, we're getting there, huh? Look at the studio. Dude, I am so there. impressed. And I don't know. You showed me some stuff before. I'm going to talk about it. Okay, in a because yeah, yeah. I am impressed by that too. So, what Winston is impressed of and what I'm impressed of is look, so we put an Amazon wish list up because Brett and I were talking about it and we said, okay, look, here's what we're going to do. We got to, we know what we want to get inside of the studio itself and what we're going to purchase and we're and he's like you should make a wish list i'm like, i'll do that for sure and if people want to contribute to the studio they can it's not it doesn't really matter whether they do or not i mean obviously it does but it doesn't matter for we it's stuff that we need to get so it's just a matter of when we would get it are we yeah. going to get it you know when people purchase it or are we going to get it when we're able to purchase it so we put it out there and we said okay here's what we're going to do and because and yeah. some people go some people say hey how can i contribute i can't be a patron and contribute every month and i can't get this and that particular sponsor doesn't really interest me so what can i do so we did that and man the amount of people that that contributed but i got to give a shout out to this dude because this guy um and, and i've been talking about it and and what i also want to make sure is if you have contributed or plan to contribute at all to the studio please put a note because I want to thank you on the air, and I want to let people know how like grateful we are to everybody. And what, what I promised um, that so this dude and I've said it on every show so far, and I'm going to say it more. So this guy Nathan, first na first rate Nate, uh, Nathan Overdell is the guy who he, he went. I mean, this guy he this this is only a few things. He got the lights, Hi. the floodlights, the TV, and and the fridge. And uh, I mean, the guy we're, we're naming the lights after him. We're just calling them the Nate lights when we get them. They're the Nate lights, and he's he's the dude's the dude's amazing. I'm, but I'm, I'm gonna be like, yo, you want to beer out the Nate? 
Right, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's yes. like the Nate studio at this point. But I will tell you though, also there, there are a lot of other people um, besides Nate who contributed, and I want to thank every single person. And I'll probably put stuff into a. I, I was I was blown away. Brett and I were both blown away because we're like, yeah, you know, people get a couple like light switches. Yeah, you know, it's it is it is amazing when you have a solid fan base that genuinely like gives a crap about you. You know what I mean? Like I I am. Just so, so impressed. And it was one of the things that, like, I, you know, I saw myself during the pandemic, a lot of the streaming I was doing on Twitch and whatnot, just how, how giving people are. Yeah. And it's, and it's amazing. And they want to support, right? And they want it to yeah. do well. And that's, that's, that's what we were getting. We were getting, like, hey, look, we just want this to be the best. It is because, and letting people know that you're going on your own and doing your own thing. Like, we want the show to improve. And people are already saying how much this, I mean, I couldn't stand the, Three shot thing that we were doing for so long, where it looked like streaming. It was just like oh, the normal. Yeah, 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 Didn't even know we were in the yeah, studio together. Yeah, yeah, it drove yeah, me crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, clearly, with this, and we're like, so we have these bookshelves that we're going to change over here. I want to change like the the freaking uh, the, the the curtains and get new curtains, and we're going to paint the walls, and I mean, we're going to do everything in the studio. And I want it to look because we already have guests coming in. Mm -hmm. um, so Cobra came in. I, I, I'm, I'm watching the new season right now. Oh, you got it. I'm watching the new season. Oh. I got I got the creators. Not coming in, but I'm having an interview with the creators next week. Nice. And then um, there's another potential cast member coming into studio. Cool. And so I want to make sure, like, right now this is still, you can't see all of it for everybody out there, but, like, it's still, you know, it's it's still a work in progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to have a guest chair with a mic coming out. And so my, my friends, both Andrew Santino and Bobby Lee, they have the show um, Bad Friends. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. absolutely modeled kind of the idea and thought process about how that when they started like we're going to get we have new tables that we want to get we want to change i mean i want to change this whole thing and i want it to be an active working studio where we can have guests in the way like mark maron did it you know absolutely dude I, look i'm trying to come in here talk about superheroes talk, and and then you know I i finally started trying to look up some of the old schmoes no shit yeah i understand <laughs> <laughs> I love how yeah. it always used to be. I got one N word, then I got one F word, and now I can only say the S word now one you can time. Just say noise, not noise. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, noise. But we, you're watching some of the old stuff. Yes, but you I can't find I, it. Do, you, well, you can't. There, people have clipped stuff out. Oh right, right, right. So, so, bro, I'm just trying to chill on a couch and just say oh, stupid right, ish. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's right, right, it, right. bro. Like I'm just trying to come in here and act like a jackal. Well, well we got and we and we have things, like, and that's the other stuff that we want to do more live shows, and we have, we're going to set up something over there, like whether it's the couch stuff, and it's, it's just it, 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 and and that's why I, I'm so incredibly grateful to everyone who donated because what you did is that you like jump started, you really did. Like it, mm -hmm. instead of us saying, okay, we're going to get all this stuff, and it'll be month, two months, three months. It's like happening now. Like I'm, I, that stream deck. That was my priority, and and I, and I believe it was. I think it was. It might have been Nate. I'm not sure, but it was somebody got the stream deck. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm gonna make sure. They're the, the they're the, those things are the best. And I, I saw you wait. got the bigger of the of the, which which is, I have the 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 kind of smaller one that I want to say it's what, uh, which actually now that I think about it, shout out to Dwayne Burke actually. So he someone that we stuff, worked yeah. with yeah. that we worked with. He yeah. he was feeling real generous one day and and hooked it up. Um, but I have the 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 five buttons off of three rows. Okay, great. And that one is great. That's what I heard. But to have the because they got you the the like deluxe um, one. Yeah, that was the one I needed. You that's, were, that's the one I needed, especially running the show. As right. If 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 you because I'm watching you do this right now, the number of photos you're putting in, yeah. jumping back and forth to camera shots, you have no idea how helpful it is. That's what I'm sure. Yeah. I, I just, I did Campy's show the other day, and he's like, dude, he's like, he's going over it, because they have like three over there. Oh, wow. And he's like, you should think about getting a second one. I'm like, I don't even know how to use the first one yet. And uh, so, so, so but, I want, but, but what everybody says, like, again, like when I switch cameras over, I'm like going like this. You're doing and it you, manually. You, you and that's, that's, the that's the funny thing that, yeah. you know, you're, you're pretty quick with it, so people don't notice, but like, it will genuinely streamline everything and, and just give it even more of a professional feel which is dope man which i'm excited about so again thank you so much to everybody out there and and by the way even if you haven't uh watching this show and clicking like and commenting and getting more sponsors to say hey we want that people are, are very like i i'm i can announce something soon that we have we have a sponsor coming up that we got because of how interactive the audience was and they said like look the numbers are good but the reason why we really want to be a part of this is because we see your community and you're in there talking to every Everybody and they're very active and we want an active community and this community is that so when you leave a comment and I comment back to you and I talk to you that is helpful I mean that is beyond helpful I don't think people realize obviously how helpful that is so 
Everybody, so thankful for everything, no matter how you are contributing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so it was a long intro, but good intro, because it's just things going down, um, and I wanted everybody to know about it. But there is some other stuff, man. There's some stuff. Let's do it. Oh, let's let's move me over. Well, actually, no. no look, see, this is the type of stuff that I want to... It's like this. Hey, yeah, yeah, my, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll start with, besides just going into all this... Uh, breakdown on the big cameos we'll talk about the episode first she hulk Dude. episode three is out did you love it i loved it okay see, it, it is was, actually my favorite oh, episode so far, it's so my far. least favorite right and yeah. so it uh, but part of it what we realize is that it's not that you're anti-comedy there's a specific brand tone. timing tone of yeah. comedy that you don't f with yeah and I, i'm realizing and or not that you don't f with it but it, it, f with grains, it, it, it grains on your nerves where where, where it is and mm -hmm. and like it's like this so three and four are my least favorite episodes. Interesting. Um, because it starts to play into that Thor Love and Thunder. Sure, area. sure, 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 sure. Like this one wasn't bad. I didn't mind it. Um, this is what I'll let you give me crap on because the audience has, and so has Roxy. No clue that Meg the Stallion was a real person. Thought yeah. Thought Meg the Stallion was <laughs> thought Meg the Stallion was made up for the show. Hundred percent. No no clue. No, 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 no. I listened do you know what we listened to this morning? We listen body, to Hall, Hall, Hall and Oates. We listen to Hall and Oates this morning. So that's that, that's that's. I did yeah. this to me. I I hang out with the whitest man of all. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. That is a yeah, man. You don't know who Meg the Stallion. Well, is. I do. Now. You do now, of but course. you didn't before. Thought it was made up. Thought it was a made up character. <sighs> okay. Thought she was great. So she was phenomenal. The music and, and then the music hit. I go. Oh, I think that's a real person. Yeah, yeah because <laughs> I knew the song. <laughs> WAP. She yes. was she was the half of WAP. I 100% no <laughs> familiar just in, dude I don't uh, my my kids my 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 kids know. My kids my 5-year-old probably knows. So I don't know any like oh. my, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's who's the yadi yadi yadi? That's not her. The body yadi, that's, that's her. her. Yeah, that's her. Yeah, 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 that's yadi, also yadi, her. Yeah, okay, exactly. So, so I know also I'm a savage. All right. So I know Classic. the song. Yeah, that's, so I just, that's, it's like like I said, who that's like my my dad. <laughs> who who sings this sings this song about the, you know, the the the, the, the big ass. Who's bro, that one? Bro, real talk. Megan has gotten so big i know she's morning. massive that's like not knowing who Nicki minaj or lady gaga oh, is i get it i'm not yeah. defending it at all yeah, yeah, yeah i'm telling you that in my house this morning That's this, funny. this i can tell you who the lead character is in zombies 3 on disney plus <laughs> that makes sense right so okay so now knowing that yes when you watched episode three initially, you didn't know who she was, so that kind of you were like, "This is a stupid bit." No, 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 no. I thought that bit was good. That okay. bit, no, no, that bit was good. It was, okay. it was the fact that this guy really thought it was uh, this famous person. It didn't yeah. matter if, if the person was real or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like the, the the bit and the understanding of it was working. It, it was when She Hulk is twerking with her at the end, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Um, that I said, "Oh, wait a minute." <laughs> I said, I think that's a, I think that's a very famous person that I don't know who that Bro, is. I'm dead. <laughs> Holy! Shit. I was like, oh, I, I, I would have swear I, so I, bad, I, and and it's well deserved. Uh, I, Roxy, Roxy on the show, which yesterday was like, ah, oh, can I out you? I'm like, a hundred percent. I'm like, I'm like, oh I'm I'm officially, I'm officially, I'm if I wasn't officially a dad, I am now. Oh my god, hundred percent. I'm it's, like, it is, yeah. it is, it is. I'll I'll be honest, with, I'll be honest with you. It's it's white dad, and the only reason. No, why, no, no. I'm telling you, there's a ton. There's a ton. If you if you brought up like some the whitest rockers ever, I would have no idea no, who they are. Well, that's right now. that's that's hundred percent. That, and that's to do fair, with. but specifically, have, you're gonna have somebody going, "Oh, it's black because he's black." No, no, it's no, no, I don't no, know no, anybody. It's not, no, no, it's not. I'm not coming. I know at you're you not like saying that. that. I know you're I'm not. specifically saying my 76 year old dad. Right. Knows who made the salad. He was like, he was sure. like, oh yeah, she got she got cakes. And I was like, why do you know the word cakes, sir? You are almost uh -huh. 80. hundred percent. Anyway, but to jump to jump to, 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 to jump into it. To jump. But 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 yeah. um yeah, no, but, but, pun, but, no, no pun intended. Pun intended. Uh, <laughs> what's getting me so much about this show, and I actually tweeted about this in like an instant reaction. <laughs> Is how good the writing is. It's it, it's very. That's the thing. It is it's, so it's very clever writing. Good. Yeah, it's very and, clever. And to keep it like y'all said in like that kind of law procedural. Yeah. And to kind of attack that, but still we have our little superhero moments coming in. Like, She Hulk at this point has been in what? Two fights. 
in, yeah. this, in the show it's so It's not far. about that. Yeah, it's and not it's about not that. About that. And it's not about that. And I'm sure we will get there where it becomes important. And I know I saw some people already complaining about the Wrecking Crew, but I thought that was a perfect way was to that the alley? That was yeah, the alley? Yeah, I, like, I, didn't, I was complaining about them, too. I didn't, I didn't love well, them. I thought I, they were too goofy. At first, I was like, well, they've always kind of been that way. Okay. Because sometimes, sometimes the Wrecking Crew is very serious, okay. but part of it is that they're bumbling idiots that are mad strong. Okay. They, 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 they okay. like their so various like the, weapons. Right. I don't think it's always been as guardian, but they have had like kind of these yeah. enchanted weapons and enhanced strength and all yeah. that kind of stuff to introduce them the way that they did. Someone was complaining um, on your video, your instant reaction, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not coming for you, dude, but I'm just, I, I, I commented back at you. They were like, the, the Wrecking Crew once took out the uh, the OG Avengers themselves, and I'm like, yeah, sure. But if you think about it this way, She-Hulk trained with Bruce for what, however long that was, yeah. and this was the first time that they had ever used those weapons. They're not going to all of a sudden just be like, and now we whooped your butt. Like I did they, like how she got scared at first. I went, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, exactly. That was, that, that I was thought great. that was brilliant. That was great. That was great. They, they, look, there's some, There's some. like I said, I think three for me is, um, is better than four. But okay. three started to go, okay, one and two to me, one had a... A really good balance, I thought. Yeah, yeah, fair. And then I thought that two just sh- shoot two is really good. Is it two specifically the elf? Is it is it the shapeshifter that that was rubbing? Um, the wrong no, way? not necessarily. I think because I think she's consistent inside of the tone itself. Though it it wasn't. It's just I think that again as I as we get into four, I think and look look, look I think with Wong right mm-hmm. bringing Wong. Wong is now they're using him in a way more comedic thing. Right, and they use them even more so in comedic in the fourth one. Oh, in the next episode. Yeah. I, I Okay, the only reason I, I, I push back is that Wong's character has consistently been the dude that, like, yeah, he's serious, yeah. but he's also... He has always been he the has, straight man joke. So like the the sandwich has. thing, how much money you got? I'm like, yeah. I got I got a couple of ru- rubles. Well, yeah. how much is that? Like two dollars? Or or the Beyonce thing? Yes, yes, yes. No, abso- abso- I'm I'm not arguing with that. There's no yeah. reason to push back because I agree. Yeah, yeah. But I just think that it's like you know I don't know. It's the third one to me again. I thought it was good, but the problem with it to me was uh oh, we're getting into Taika territory now because the, Jessica Gao did not write. Uh huh. Three and four. She wrote one and two from, okay. what I, from what I know. And one, I thought that the writing was way better in one and two. I thought there was there was a lot of great stuff going on mm-hmm. in three and four. Um, we're, we're talking three, so because people are like, well, we haven't seen four, dummy. I'm like, okay, it's fair. It's fair. <laughs> but I, what I liked about three, we we actually got into a law show this time. Yes, we like did. we were, we were yes, setting we it up in the yeah. first two yeah, 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 and, yeah. and the superhero. I think that's why I liked it so much is yeah. because I'm a diehard Law and Order fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's so more about like, that case and less about the superhero stuff, right? Yeah. So Even like, though it's incorp- in, incorporated, yeah. And, and to think that some of the joke, like the thing that killed me, is Wong, for example, being like, "Sir, you know, you just admitted to a felony." And he goes, right. "Yeah, I gotta go." <laughs> like, that's I thought that hilarious. was funny, and I liked and I really liked the stuff with um abomination i really I, did. I thought that was great I thought and was I, the fact that he's he's essentially bundy and has a bunch of like women like in love with it what is his soulmates and he has yeah. the seven soul not, not, not bundy not bundy uh, david koresh is it koresh yeah the, the, bundy, the, bundy bundy was no not bundy who's the other one manson manson for sure manson, manson okay sure. I, I, y- y'all y'all yeah. serial killer white people i can't give you yeah right? yeah yeah but i i i um I just really genuinely thought that, again, the tongue-in-cheek kind of stuff, being like, hey, this ain't going to be a cameo show every week, well, except for Bruce. I, I did love and, that. And for, yes. and for Abomination. Yes. Okay, and Wong. Yeah. Damn. Okay, well, remember who Sotis is. Like, I thought that was great. And I thought they did a disservice to her when they clipped that part out on social media because mm-hmm. they just clipped that part out. Mm-hmm. It's the setup mm-hmm. of all that that makes that work really well. Because mm-hmm. everything that you just said, when she's saying... Well, this isn't a cameo of the week show. And then like you said, oh, but this and that and this. Uh, but this is my show. And, and it's like that to me. It's like they're still letting you know there's going to be tons of cameos, but it's going to be that lawyer-based show. And that's what I love about the show is it's very self-aware. Yes. I think more so than, I mean, I get it when you're in, breaking the fourth wall, it's easier to do that. But it's very self-aware in the sense that even doing the social media posts where like people be like, oh, they're just, you're just going to steal, you're going to take the Hulk away from I the man. And, and then the one, the, one, the one that killed me is a little black kid, he was maybe 13, he goes, yeah, no, I still hit it though. Like I'd smash. He said I'd smash, and I was like, "Yo, specifically using smash because of the whole oh, that, yeah. brilliant." And the reporters, the reporters got me too, where they were like, "So what is it like just being out here letting out villains?" And sh-? Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, "Yo, it, 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 that, I think that it's funny because, like I said, I watched the first four um, in the same day. Yeah, because we had the early screener. So uh, as you start to talk, because I did my 
that early reaction that I did and, and everything that was from the day. And uh-huh. I just last week I put it up early. The reaction like that's not an instant reaction. I'm like, yeah, but it, I, I'm like, forget it. I'm just I timed it out last night, like at 1230 <laughs> right after the show aired. So, um, so but, but but either way, but as you talk about it more, I remember like like I definitely liked three. Um, more so than four, and I remember saying on side in, in my re- in reaction, and even in my spoiler review, that that all that stuff, that self aware, I'm like even, even no one would ever admit it that like there's there's obviously outlets and people who yeah. are their their channel is and their stuff is they have to hate stuff in, sure. o- in order to get their their of clicks. So it's you, just part you've, of it. you've chosen the dark side, but, living it, whatever. whatever. But but it, that's that's their business, right? But the yeah. but the thing is, I would love to actually see to sit down and talk to some of them off camera and go come on you got to give credit to some of that because that was clever tell that whole report I'm absolutely look look if this is just not your cup of tea i i don't have any beef with that but the people that can't objectively look and go this is actually very clever writing right and this is being acted very well right i think you just want to be a hater you don't have to like the show you, you don't say, have to like the show but you can a hundred you can say because i i've saw i've saw and i want to thank people by the way on my instant reaction i saw some great comments i go look I don't really love the show. Uh, I tried. Not my tone. Not digging it. Glad people are. Uh, but I don't know. There was one guy who gave a... I didn't like the way he opened his comment, but he but he gave a lot of good reasons why. He started, I, I, one of my biggest pet peeves when people go, are we watching the same things? Like, clearly not, because I, I don't like when people do that. I don't respond to that, because it's like, you don't watch shows the way that I do. Right. I don't watch shows the way you do. You so, also don't have the experiences I have that's going to resonate in a different way. 100%. I, I, but but I don't take but the, but I don't take anything away from that guy because I thought he presented himself very well afterwards. Or right. when he didn't like it. He just opened with that that particular it's, thing. It's hard to say. It's hard to be objective about art, right. honestly. But it, it drives me up the wall when because I can I can step back. For example, and I, I kept using this uh, when we were doing SCN live and we were in studio that I did not like Greta's Little Women. I just right. didn't like it because it, I just didn't vibe with the tone. I don't normally get into stuff like that. The same thing's true about like Downton Abbey. There's a lot of uh, Handmaid's Tale. Uh, That's not I your have, vibe. That it's not my vibe, but I can objectively go, they are acting their asses off. The writing on this is phenomenal. Like I can look at it and just actively say, this is being done properly. And so that's kind of the thing that I'm feeling about this show i am loving this show but i can objectively also say that it's like a good it's it's being done well i agree and i think that that's the um that's that's why i'm very curious to see what people think of the next one because as i i'm just very very curious because of the the tone itself and we know daredevil's coming in right mm-hmm. it does make me nervous that daredevil is going to get the kind of treatment that kingpin did because I hated how I, Kingpin was done. Hated it. If I had to guess, and this is the thing, I think when you ha- you're going to end up in a situation where Daredevil will probably be more kind of closer to maybe like a Colossus was in Deadpool, in a sense where he is going to. Sarcastic. He cracked jokes though, and he did crack jokes in Netflix. There was no. Uh, he wasn't super serious. He, he cracked, cracked jokes in Spider Man. He did. He you did. Know? I. But I'm saying I hope they keep him like that. Yeah. Like, as opposed to, I mean, because. And I don't disagree with you. Wong, even though they're using him for a lot more, he he, he doesn't. He his just, character didn't change. His character didn't change. Right. They're just like, I, I'll wait until you watch the next one. Sure. But his hair, his character, even then, doesn't change. Cool. It's just using him for more like bits. You know, similar to what they did in Guardians of the Galaxy uh-huh. too, right? So um, Drax. So he was still the same kind of character in, in the second one. Mm. But he's there to just throw jokes. Mm-hmm. He's just, it's like everyone's throwing yeah, yeah, jokes. He, he had much less of a, I agree. He that had makes much me less nervous. A, he had much less of a story arc. I think the only, he might be the only character that I really, th- I know he had that bonding with Mantis where he just wasn't yeah. into it. And then him and Mantis became really close. Yeah. And I think the bigger story arcs for Guardians 2, I know you don't love that film. Um, I don't. Is, is, is Rocket and then Gamora and... Uh, uh, Nebula. Yeah. It really is just that, like, Rocket really coming to terms with, okay, yeah, I'm a monstrosity, but this is my family. I'm full of monstrosity. Like, it, that that kind of connection. So I get it with Drax. If all it is is, like, you can't even see me. I'm just. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, it, funny. Funny. Yeah. I don't mind. I, and, and, again, that's the thing is it's not like I'm sitting there like this. That's not sure. funny. It is. There's a lot yeah, of, it's yeah, just, yeah. I, I don't know. It. I said this. I don't know where the hell I said it, but my. 
I think that I get nervous with how much Marvel's really leaning into comedy. Now, this uh -huh. show is supposed to be comedy. Uh -huh. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be this 22-minute, 30-minute episodic thing, and it's succeeding at that. And I think it and, and I think that it does more so. I think that um what I, I want it to tread lightly and don't start tiptoeing into like CW territory. You know, I, I totally understand that. And I think we're, we're a long way from that. I mean, I know that, that we're, we're moving in a direction, but we are a long way from that. And I, I think the bigger thing, and that's part of it is a lot of it has to do with the tone of the character. She Hulk yeah. was always going to be like this. Miss Marvel was always going to have more of a, uh, you know, kind of a teenager kind of type love that tone. Show, I love that show love too. That show. Um, but then, like Moon Knight, for example, sure you had some comedy there, but it was pretty serious the whole time. Yeah. You did a lot of murders, yeah. like, like trying to figure out this mystery of why I keep dissipating at it, like and losing my mind. Like, there's there's a lot of different angles, and I think well, well, hold, hold that thought because you bring up Moon Knight, and so that's my thing. Is sometimes I wonder if Marvel's like, oh, it's getting a little too serious. We got to throw some stuff in because I think of right away in the Moon Knight thing where you're having this serious moment where he's trying to balance between the two mm -hmm. and Steven, right? So mm -hmm. Steven is and Mark, yeah, and, and yeah, but it's Steven who starts like shadow boxing like the demon dog and like to, to lighten up the mood and it's consistent with this character mm -hmm. but i was like we're in the middle of this serious thing and here's this guy now goofing around but then if you watch the whole series it does play in but i i don't know i just get thrown off sometimes because i think that i'm just so beaten down by all of the I just, goofy humor i and i get moon knight would have been a little closer to that potentially i just don't think the only time i might get really concerned about this is if if like once we get a Ghost Rider, once right. Blade comes out, right. if that happens, we're having a different conversation. But I think all the rest of the characters that we've been talking about and the things around them, it does lend itself it to does. comedy. I'll I will I will I still rock with Love and Thunder. I will concede to you, especially doing our rewatches and and all that. That probably the best balance is Infinity War and Game Thor. Yes. Um. Yeah. Um. I would say even maybe even more so Infinity War over Endgame because they were really leaning into the, the the leaning into Fat Thor was leaning closer and closer to Love and Thunder, if we're yeah. being honest. Um it, that was that was kind of the perfect tee up to end up in the Love and Thunder if that that was so if you're looking for that balance of like I can still crack jokes, but I'm also then it's Infinity War Thor. Um But that being said we're about to get more characters that this ain't a joke. Like look at Black I, Panther too, man. Yeah, I cannot. I, I can't start throwing a lot of jokes. There will him. there will be because yeah. of just black humor in general. So yeah. sure, he's gonna probably say some stuff. Like there will be things like that because you see that levity. But you're right; it is very serious yeah. for the most part. It has to be. Look, it's it's and again, it's not it's not that there can't be jokes in it. There yeah. should be. And I always use this example when I throw around like Star Wars, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. To me, the perfect use of Star Wars and humor and consistency to character is in The Mandalorian Season 1 mm -hmm. when he's trying to get his ship back with the Jawas. Mm -hmm. and he's sitting there with the Jawas, and the Jawas are laughing at him because mm -hmm. he can't speak Jawanese. And then mm -hmm. Nick Nolte's character goes, ah, they're, they're making funny of Jawas. He's like, how you can't understand him? He's like, can you understand this? And he tries to let him on fire. It's consistent <laughs> to The Mandalorian. Yeah, he's yeah. not like going, oh, yeah, well, you're going to be burning hot now. Yeah, he yeah, he yeah, just yeah, yeah. tries to set him on fire. Yeah, that yeah, in yeah. itself is hilarious. Yeah. And like Bill Burr, the way that he consistently himself and things. Mm -hmm. And there are things that, that characters do. Tony Stark. Yeah. The Galactica stuff. Oh, what, what was it? The, the is That man's playing whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> that man's playing Galaga. <laughs> right. Galaga. Right. Like that's, that, I have no issue with that because that's consistent. To, Tony Stark. I just rewatched one and two with my daughter. Avengers? Consistent. No, uh, Iron Man. Oh. Consistent oh. with him. So mm -hmm. I, it's not that I don't mind humor. It's yeah. consistency to character and not just like, you know, like you can see people sitting around a room and, and this doesn't really rely, re excuse me. Um, relay to uh, She-Hulk because mm -hmm. it's supposed to be a comedy so you can see I give it more of a pass because I worry in a, in a screenwriting room when they're in a writer's room during one of the big movies and they're mm -hmm. like oh you know what this would be a perfect time for so and so Shuri to say a joke right here about this this oh that would be hilarious oh, the, it'll get a, such a big reaction and I wish and I want somebody to go yeah but that's kind of bringing down the, the what we're trying to do here in the mood it doesn't seem like that happens a lot of times and She-Hulk they have to be going for the joke a lot of the time, so I can see where the balance shifts. It's, I get it more. I mean, that's I guess the thing that's so interesting is, 
and that would be that would be a fun. I mean, I know we're sort of having it right now, and I'm curious what Koi thinks. That I I think who's that? <laughs> <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> He's not fired. I'm kidding. He'll be back. And just for that big shot, you got a one on one with the Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, I just it's it's one of those things that if you go and look at a lot of those characters, I. The only one that I think I can fully concede to you at this point is Thor. The rest of them stay pretty within their lane. Like, I mean, even Cap being still Cap, and then the one little joke in Endgame is, that is that is America's ass. Yeah, like that, you know what I'm fun. saying? Doctor We're Strange like, 2, man. Uh, yeah. In Doctor Strange 2, when, and they did it because it's a Raimi movie, and the movie was made for Raimi fans. It's because when oh, he- Oh, the when, Bruce thing? What, Bruce, Bruce Campbell. Campbell when he's beating the piss out of that himself Evil Dead it's, it was a throwback to Evil Dead yes. and it was like oh hey, hey it, it was so like hey look at all the stuff we've accomplished and this is our and I get it for Evil Dead fans they lost their minds right and I like Evil Dead uh, but I didn't think it had a place there just Bruce Campbell beating the shit out of him beating the crap out of himself that, like that type of stuff so the only thing that I will say about that and I think that's kind of what's going on here um Feige has loosened the reins a little bit for the people that are now allowed to. He's I letting think that's people stop go. Now. At, uh, I think that's going to stop. I think we're going to start to see a situation where it'll be a case by case basis. Yes. I don't yes. think it'll be everybody's allowed to do it. I think it'll be because the the rumor was like with Ryan, for example, because uh, Ryan Coogler. Yeah. Um, the rumor was that Feige was doing his Feige thing. But because we were dealing with such a black centric thing and because Ryan had already kind of proven his metal of like, like with the Creed story, let me show you my vision. Yeah. He got a little bit looser on the reins to do whatever. But then like you look at some of the other films, um, say like Captain Marvel, for example, that felt like that was pretty tightly gripped yeah. Yeah. and they were doing what they were doing. And ironically, the ones that have resonated with people a little bit more tended to be the ones where they kind of let the cooks cook. Like the Russos, yeah, the, Fe Feige was kind of, but the Russos just got the chance to just go. Yes, but but there's a difference though as well. There's a, it's it depends on story, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do bringing a bringing a director in to put forward their vision and not have them the handcuffs. Of course, that's what you want because mm -hmm. otherwise, why do you hire them? Right. But you want to stay within the tones of the story to make sure it doesn't overpower your movie. Sure. So, like, I bring up Raimi again. Like, Raimi's style overpowered Doctor Strange. Too. Absolutely. Taika Waititi overpowered Love and Thunder. Uh, yes. Um, so, when you bring up something like the Russos, their style, even though it's action heavy and all that type mm -hmm. of stuff, that's their style, mm -hmm. even though it maybe overpowers the movie the thing is it's consistent with the story yes. that they're telling so when you start to shift away from the story and you start to shift away because of the director's style that's the issue right and you have that same issue with and most people have that same issue with eternals oh i liked eternals oh you did okay I so, did. Some, so but, some people but do. but that's and, and the funny thing is the long that shots was, that was Chloe's style uh, everywhere. It, it was, and I think maybe because I love that style, and I like that kind of, that a little bit more. It was more serious. It had yeah. there were jokes in it. There was stuff that was in. But there, it was but very serious. It was serious, and I think that maybe that's why I responded to it a little more, and I liked going outside a little bit more of the of, of the the typical traditional thing yeah. that we've been doing. So I really liked the Eternals. I'm one of the few. I you know what's funny though? I think the only director that I think truly maybe like missed the mark on the tone is maybe just we've gone too far like you said with taika mm -hmm. and and i i again i still love it but i can i can i can openly admit everything that people are saying i can i can get with that and then um Oh Lord, my brain we'll just move went out of my head. We'll uh, I I I forgot, but it's 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 fine. But like Eternals, for example, for anybody that's read those books, there's not really a funny thing. Their existence is just constantly sad. I know. It's the fact that exactly as you heard, they're it. just they're just slaves to the celestials. Yeah. They are literally just there to protect humans, but only so that the celestials can harvest people and make like multiply. You think they're and, gonna make they're gonna announce Eternals two at D twenty three. I think it's too soon, and I and I think it's too soon because that wasn't your that wasn't your one that did bread and did. Th there will be a second Eternals, 
but that wasn't the one that like did gangbusters. If if right. I had to guess, Shang Chi is getting oh, an yeah. announcement oh, before yeah. before before Eternals does. Okay, so Shang Chi is probably a good one to talk about as well, right? Um, I think Shang Chi to me is a good blend where they use. I think Aquafina was was used very well in that mm-hmm. because she had a character that had a purpose. There, her her character was funny. She ben was- Kingsley was much better in that than he was in other stuff because. His character inside, uh, what's his name? Uh, Iron Man 3, Trevor, yeah, Trevor Slattery. Slattery, right. Yeah. His tone fit, surprisingly enough, because when that movie needed to be serious, the yeah. serious things worked. When yeah. it needed to be emotional, it worked. When there needed to be humor, the humor worked. So that's a movie that I think had a nice balance to it, for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. You're talking about Sh- Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. And I think the other part of it, too, is you essentially... For lack of a better example, Aquafina essentially played the role of like a Cat Dennings in that in that in that. Yes, but, le- but less, but same, same purpose, but but wasn't but wasn't there to just go hey? less less Thor, more Wandavision. Yes, she was great. That in that that's that's what that, I'm I'm, I'm yes. that Cat Dennings. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yes, she was great in Wandavision. Mm-hmm, great. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think uh, you know you know that's the one thing that I think they are doing well is i do think that for the most part the comedy is working i get that people are like oh it's, you know i i'm not here for the jokes and i'm like all right it is what it is when we get to the major events some of she hulk in, in, in general in general we get to the major events people will get serious because like yeah. when the one thing i will give him credit maybe the first battle with boar thor was still a little jokey because he was also like Jane's here and so is Mjolnir, so he's a little confused, so you're going to lean into the comedy there. But when the final fight went actually happened, I know the children part threw you off. Thor was dead serious. He was. And, you it, know, it, the second half is way better than the first. I think so. The second half is, there's no, uh, as much as I don't love that movie, the second half is way better. And I am, it's coming out soon on Disney Plus, so uh, I'm, I'm going to. Did it not already? Maybe. I'm going to be watching it uh, for sure. Um, okay. There was a lot of stuff. I think that it was kind of a balance between She-Hulk and I think, that, uh, I'm probably going to do a clip out on the, on the Big Thing Clips channel just say, is there too much, too much humor in Marvel right now, so that's kind not of not with She-Hulk, but but if you, no, if you want to make the general argument, I wouldn't fault you, but I don't. I want to hear what the com- I want to hear what I'm the curious. audience. I'm yeah, curious. hear what the audience says. So yeah. make sure you comment and and let us know um, in the comments for the clips channel and this channel, obviously. Okay, uh, I do want to jump around and let's go here. Speaking of She-Hulk and staying with She-Hulk, She-Hulk attorney at law, creative team, and star Tatiana Maslany break down today's big cameo. So the spoilers if you haven't seen it. If you if you haven't seen it, then you shouldn't be listening to this show. Um, <laughs> So, attorney Jessica Gout, director Kat Corio, and Tatiana Maslany all weigh in. Now, okay, so someone told me Jessica Gout didn't write the third. We'll, we'll find out. I thought time. this was another situation where there was one main writer and like a room that like helped, but then there was just them. Is that I don't not know. that? Well, uh, so Megan the Stallion, who I knew very well going into the show, <laughs> made her Marvel Cinematic Universe debut. Originally revealed as an Ars- as Guardian shapeshifter, the real deal showed up in a post credit scene for a twerking session with the show's sensational lawyer turned superhero. This is one of the MSU, uh, MCU's biggest celebrity cameos to date. That's hilarious. So what made the WAP singer the right choice for Jennifer Walters' latest case? We knew for that story we needed a famous, beautiful, successful woman. Jessica Gao tells the TV line, we were going through all possibilities, but when it came down to it, Jamila Jamil, who plays Tatiana, knew Megan from working on HBO's Legendary together. Oh, that's pretty cool. And, oh. and brought it up. We were like, don't say it if it's not really true. Don't tease us with this. That's really that's that's fun. As for yeah. the twerking scene, Kat Coro reveals it wasn't scripted and actually happened naturally on set. That's pretty amazing. The dancing was actually added to the script on the day. Tatiana was so excited, the filmmaker says. She's the world's biggest Megan the Stallion fan, and we were like, we've got to give her something. So they threw together this dancing scene. Tatiana Maslany was understandably a little starstruck, but yes, that really was her pulling off those moves while decked out in a motion capture <laughs> suit. That was all me. That was all me. The actor laughed. It was a dream come true. It was like absolutely top moments on set. Anything I've ever done. That's pretty cool. I was shaking and I was nervous, and then the music played, and I was like, I'm going to make in the Stallion music video. I mean, it's pretty adorable. It was a fun moment, that's for sure. Not every fan has embraced the cameo, but... Oh, really? That's interesting. Uh, but enlisting a star like oh, Megan... Oh, absolutely. And, I, and I'll, I'll tell you why. A lot of, like... It's it's same. not 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 to even go there. Yeah. Oh, I want to get a, a, a strike on that one. <laughs> Just turn the, the, the volume yeah. off. But yeah, the uh, dude. Oh, still gonna do it on. oh, it re. Yeah, there you go. But there's um. I just. <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean. That's pretty fine. 
But well, that. But I'll tell you why. A lot of the people that weren't gonna get behind it is gonna be a lot of like kind of dude bro stuff. It's just it's just good fun, dude. Like it's one of those things. In the same way that it, instead of She Hulk, if it if it had been like, I don't know, Spider Man, and then all of a sudden it was like, uh, who's David Lee Roth? That's current. <laughs> no, it's not uh, current. No. Right. I don't, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if if all of a sudden Spider Man was just like kicking it with Bieber or something. Okay. Like you know, I, I know him. You I know, know, you know, you know, heard, Bieber, right? Bieber. Like Jason Bieber, right? Uh, yeah, I've heard of him. I heard of him. Like it's just good fun. Like who well, Roxy cares? said this. Roxy said this yesterday, and mm-hmm. I think said, this is this is what people don't understand. People think, and and so to start it back when it comes to like say something like Ms. Uh, Ms. Marvel. Mm-hmm. So when that trailer hit, we talked about it on this show. We talked about other things. Like I saw that trailer and I said it's got a Scott Pilgrim vibe. It looks really fun, but it looks yeah. like it's aimed towards my ten-year-old daughter, yeah, yeah, yeah. which essentially it was. However, I found myself really enjoying the show because of the family dynamic, the great performances by the kids, um, and it, it was the family stuff that I actually liked way more than the superhero stuff itself inside of it. Right, but. Again, it wasn't aimed towards me, and some and some stupid ass on uh, on the comments was like, "Oh, uh, a little bit of white guy doesn't think it's aimed at him." It's like, no, dumb, dumb. It's it, it, it's it was literally it, not. It wasn't. It, but but the point is, for it wasn't aimed at me because it was aimed towards younger girls and families and Absolutely. stuff too. And um, and uh, but that being said, I found myself really enjoying it. But there are tons of people who didn't enjoy it and sure. maybe didn't re- relate to it, didn't f- you know feel that family element, didn't like it. Sure. Same goes for She-Hulk, and this is what Roxy was saying yesterday. And Roxy said, this show is aimed towards her. It is aimed, it's aimed towards, towards millennial it's women. aimed towards women. Now, mm-hmm. you don't have to like it because if, if you're like, well, it's not aimed for me, I can't relate to it, I don't like the characters, then you have the right to that. But you can also look at it and say, oh, why do you like it? Because you're an MCU stan? No, I like it because it's, it's clever. I didn't think I was, I didn't think the jokes looked good in the trailer. I remember you were the biggest person looking at the trailer and going, I am not going to like this yeah, show. But I and gave it a shot. You gave it a shot and you've been enjoying it. And I, here's the thing that I think people forget so hard. Stop trying to please everybody. Yeah. Because you, you look at any artist, like, for example, um, Meg the Stallion, just because that's who we're talking about. She was in make, the show, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she doesn't make music for every person in the world. Right. You physically can't do that. That's it's impossible. Any, that's any artist. But that's right. my whole yes, point. Uh, absolutely. Richard Pryor is one of the greatest comedians of all time. He did not write his jokes for white people. No. He wrote his jokes for black folk that understood and white people found it funny because, he did, because he's he, just, he is so pointed at what he yeah. wants to talk about. Right. It's hard to dismiss how good it is. Absolutely. It's the same thing could be said about Black Panther. The same thing can be said about so many different forms of art, music, movies, TV, whatever. And that's to me where I feel like, again, Get out of your hater mode for two seconds and genuinely look at something and be like, all right, I know you ain't talking to black ass, grew up in suburban Dallas, like whatever as Winston A. Marshall, but even though you wrote it for Roxy, is this a situation where like, I can still look at it and go, okay, that's pretty funny. Like I, maybe I don't get that joke cause I'm not a woman, but is that still, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, how- but also it's also very fair to say, hmm. Watch two episodes, not for me. Gonna bail. I'll Absolutely. watch the next thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. But to to then to, just to go after crap and, on it. But but even even if you're gonna look, it's okay to be critical of something. That's yes, part of it. That's it's fine. okay to be critical. You can say, I don't like this show. This show like look, the same way what I think that a lot of people do, and I'm not saying you're doing this right now, but yeah. a lot of people do feel like they've got to defend it because so many there are a lot of haters out there and they feel like, look, then just give it a shot or just do this and just it's like no, you can be as as critical of like a movie that we thought like so look at uh the monsters. Mm-hmm. That trailer alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wrecked that, that trailer to pieces. <laughs> wrecked. Now, I think it looks terrible. And I'll look yeah. I'll watch the movie yeah. and I will say if it's good and I'll also say if it stinks. Yeah. Right. People should have the right to say, I don't like this show. I think the show stinks. Absolutely. It's when they start to get into this ridiculous political agenda on both That's sides. The, the, yes. On both sides yes. that has happened many times over and started to happen, especially in the fandom, that they feel like they have to A, they feel like they're being attacked, whether it's on whether it's and again, I know that this isn't necessarily a left versus right thing, but it's very similar. 
to the way that left versus right fights each other all the time. And that's what it feels like. You have these people who are just, whether they feel like they have to defend this show that they didn't write, they didn't yeah. star in, they didn't do it. And yeah. then you feel these other people who just feel like they have to hate it to hate it. And they're different. It's a, it's a television show. It's like it, when you have like Sebastian, what are you talking <laughs> about? There's a green woman winning law cases <laughs> and you're getting angry about it. Go and have a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I that is that is definitely it. We have gotten to a place on every level, on every side, where people are so sensitive about stuff, and I think why people get so upset, and understandably so, this whole narrative, oh, the MCU type stuff. It's like, or there are Marvel characters of all ilks, and they're getting now to other characters they haven't talked about, and just let it be. And even if it is, why do you care? It's like, don't watch it. It's like one of these things, oh, you make like these reports and you're making a stance and they're still going to make this stuff and it's like and i'm again no one especially me i'm not saying no one that's not true there are a lot of people that tell you like oh maybe if you weren't such a, a misogynist for this you would watch the show and for a lot of people that very well might be true but there are other people who just don't like it and they're unfairly and this is what i mean both sides they're unfairly attacked if someone like when well, i didn't like the cgi on, mm -hmm. on it, like, uh, or, or bring up the Ms. Marvel thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was aimed at me, so I automatically didn't want to see a show with brown people in it. It's like, well, that's freaking stupid. And that, that happens to a lot of people. When you're just taking your it's, opinion out, they throw it back in your face, and it's both sides that do stupid do things. You, do you ever, uh, did you ever watch the show Adam Ruins Everything? Uh, Adam no. Conover, all that kind of stuff. It, one of the things that was, uh, I, I uh, went to uh, an event, and someone was just talking about him casually, and they were like, Adam's one of the few people that reads the article to the end. What my issue is with everybody is that we've gotten so clickbaity. So I just read the one line of a tweet, not even the full tweet, not even what the context was, just the one little thing. You see Marvel woman lead, you go, ah! like, you know what but I'm it saying? Goes to the politics of the country and stuff too. Absolutely. That's, that's the problem is that right now, this country in general, both sides mm -hmm. uh, are very angry Absolutely. everybody is angry so whatever side you're on politically it doesn't just fall into politics it falls into everything it falls yeah. into whether or not yep. you know you the stuff that you're watching the music you're listening to all this stuff and people are just angry and like and again it's both sides like i like there are a lot of people who feel like they're on their they're on one side and they're fighting the right side so they're going oh you know what? we're the ones in the right you're not it's like people are just screaming at each other and the overall the bottom line is it's a comedy television Absolutely. show. Absolutely. It's it. I, it, it. Essentially, where we're at at this point is if collectively as society, if we're all the Hulk, every little, like, one of these is like a, ah! like, you, you're, like you, you're, you're, you're building into the rage. Everything. And I, and I, and, and that is part of the problem, is I just need everyone to take a deep breath. Yes, and there's tons of shows out there, dude, that yeah. do it on both sides, right? So, like, yeah. if you look at one side, it's just going, like, before the show comes out, they're riling people up to hate it because it's the, like you said, the MCU, and they're like, get ready, it's going to be another one where they're trying to take us down. And then there's the other side of it going, look out, here's these people, these people don't like it, so they're obviously, they're the bad guy, and it's like, N no, just... I just wish that everybody could look at the show and do 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 one do this. I really liked it. Or it stinks. Bye. And that's it. Leave that's it at it. that. Leave it at that. That's it. Why didn't why do you why do you like it? I'll tell you. Why do you think it stinks? Let me tell you. Okay, good. I didn't like it. Well, that's good. Good for you. Roxy and I had a great conversation the other day about uh, Game of Thrones, right? Mm -hmm. I have loved every single second of both episodes. There are certain scenes in episode mm -hmm. one that she did, and the fans tore her apart. Which was it. stupid. Really stupid. And I said to her, I said on the show yesterday, a big thing, I said, okay, so this is ultimately what I think is, could be the same exact thing if Roxy gives her points and I look at her and I go, I hear what you're saying. I disagree with you. And here's why I disagree with you. Okay, great. Okay, you liked it. I didn't. Or vice versa. Let's move on. And that doesn't happen. It's like everybody's got to prove a point and show how much smarter they are. I mean, and because it's the other thing. You're on the other side of the screen, so you're not a real person. And that's the thing that's wild to me. They're, they're, they're <laughs> the funny thing is for a majority of the people that are on the internet, and again, on both sides of this, I agree with you with that. Everybody got a big mouth. Yes. But got a big mouth when it's nothing but a keyboard. It, and it's this. Oh, yeah? Yeah? All right. I'm going to show you. Here we go. 
Now, Come on, everybody who's on my side, retweet that because I'm not going to convince anybody else except the people who are already on my side. I just, I, I'm, I, I am, I am very, it's, it's funny because what I've found is that I've, I've never been one that like actually likes to f fight. I'm that person that I'm like, if I get in a fight, I'm hitting you over a chair to start the fight because I'm trying to end it immediately. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, it. They ain't, ain't no, okay, come on, square up, man. I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah, like, what's, what's so funny is that everybody who's doing that, both sides are sending that, that tweet. You don't realize this, that at a time when you're not on, the same page as the people on your side, yeah. they will turn against you. Absolutely. Both sides. Absolutely. No, 100%. no, no. A, th a, th a thousand percent. Like, I have a lot of conversations, you know, behind closed doors uh, with my girlfriend about where some stuff, like, we we are very progressive where we're, we're like, yep, I agree with that. I agree with that. And then there'll be one thing that happens that I go, <laughs> I'm telling I you. I feel like y'all are y'all are reaching, man. Y'all are reaching, and, and I don't like and it. And you can't say anything on Twitter because if you do, then you're fighting against the team's I'll, I'll agenda. Give you, I'll give you the best example. This one killed me, bro. On TikTok, there was, uh, you saw probably a while ago, Drew Barrymore or heard about this. She was running in the rain. She was like, oh, my God, the rain is so amazing. Like, go out, appreciate nature, appreciate life, right? This black woman goes on TikTok thinking she got the hottest take ever. She about to, she about to get Drew. She's like, yo, white privilege ass you just out here i would love to enjoy rain and you know black people enjoyed rain before white people did and you this just out not, here this isn't real oh it's, i will show you the video oh she's like she's like you you out here with your privilege you think you could just do whatever you want rich white woman doing whatever black people ripped her a new one there was a few that were like yeah get her but 90 percent were like we don't associate with her. Uh, please, she does rain. not speak for us. Like, do you, Drew? But, like, you are ridiculous. And that's the thing. I just need people to honestly look at a situation right. and be like, is this a scenario where, yeah, someone is actually persecuting somebody, you're going to hurt somebody, right. is you're the whatever. Is fight worth fighting? Or is the are, fight you worth just, fighting? are you just right. blowing smoke, well, that's bro? What I'm there are definitely fights that are worth fighting, but it just seems like everybody thinks everything is worth fighting, and it is not the case. And She-Hulk is not the case. It's not the case. Uh, it's so silly. Like, like it, what's so funny about all this is that when I, when I talk about, like, if I was good, could talk to my friends back home, and I was like, hey, do you guys know about that the big discourse going on with, like, The Last Jedi? And they'd be like, Shut up, nerd. Let's go get pizza. <laughs> like, like, what are you talking about? How, like, 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 it's not real. No one's fighting over a Star Wars movie. I'm like, no, no, no. It's, it's true. Like, no, you're making it up because you want it to sound more important than it is. And it's so ridiculous. That it's, it's so wild. ridiculous. It's wild. I, the only thing, well, no, I won't. I won't. Say I would that. stay out of it. I'm gonna. I, I wasn't gonna say specifically about the Last Jedi. I was like, I'm, I'm glad we're like talking about stuff, but I realized that. None of the discourse is actually helpful. Like, there's very little yeah. of it that's like productive. No, there's some. Like, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying yeah. fight the fight when it's worth fighting the fight. Like, yeah. we know many people, mm -hmm. many people that we work with that just tweet to tweet, and it's like I saw something this morning, and I'm like, look, I get that you're like calling out for people, and there's things you want, and and, and sometimes it's like a call for support, yeah. and it makes yeah, you yeah. feel better. But like, call somebody. Yeah, Talk yeah. to somebody yeah, yeah. because it's like that's the type of stuff that I just feel like if you start yelling and screaming into the wind, it's like everyone on your side is going to go, yeah, and then everyone else against your side is going to go, shut up, stupid. You're never going to convince the person on the other Absolutely. side. And that's what conversation is is supposed to be I for. Agree. Conversation is supposed to be, okay, you and I are going to talk. Now, do I think I'm going to sway you into my point of view? No, but I hope from talking to you eye to eye as a human being that you can understand where I'm coming from. See it a different way. And maybe see it a different way, understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying, and we go, all right, and we shake hands and that's it. As opposed to if I say something to you on Twitter and then go, <clears throat> and then I walk that's away, we can't have that the, conversation. The, 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 the full problem is we do not respect each other's humanity anymore. Not not is, not on not on social media. We don't well, face well, to face. I, I think we do. Well, but sometimes. that's but see that I think the problem is because of if you think of social media as like alcohol, because of how drunk we get off of social media and all of that kind of stuff, yeah. we 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 act like asses in yeah. person too because yeah, people aren't real on the other side of the computer. Uh, so uh, it, it's it's it, I I'm surprised you haven't started using this more often. But the big trend right now for people that are hardcore weight. Twitter warriors and TikTok and folks and, and all that kind of stuff is people will just respond by saying, go outside and touch grass. Yeah, right. It, it's literally, you are not living in the real world. Well, go outside and touch grass. Because I gave up on it. I, I mm. If you go to my Twitter, it's retweet. It's, a, it's responses to a few people who are asking about 
whether it's stuff that I, that we're doing yeah. or it's other things, I don't I don't get into that discourse stuff. No, 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 I just don't. I, I, no, 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 I even, get... even a response to a negative comment. Yeah, I, I don't even try. Like even on YouTube, mm -hmm. I I I used to like go back and try to be. Sometimes I'll throw some silly stuff in there, right? Like someone if someone writes SMH to a comment, I go, oh, don't don't SMH, you'll hurt your neck, right? <laughs> like like stupid things. Like I'll do stupid things like that, but I'm I don't. I don't think it's worth fighting because I don't know that person. Then that's the difference. That's what I realized when I was having the conversation with myself. And I yeah. said, these people that I'm getting mad at and yelling back on social media or, or YouTube when they're responding, how do I know that that person, if I met them in person and had a slice of pizza with them, that I wouldn't find one of my new best friends? How do I know that? I don't know that because I don't know that keyboard that said that comment. I'd rather have a conversation with somebody back and forth Understand why, and there's some people, Winston, that are just there to spew hate, and they'll come back. Absolutely. And there's other people who, who people who do want to have a conversation, and I think that's more helpful. It's it's interesting because one of my best friends in the whole world uh, was actually one of my bullies in like middle yeah, school. You tell me that, yeah. And one day I would like snapped, and I was like, I will beat your ass. Right. And then after that, like we've been thick as thieves right. since. Like I was, I yeah, was, that was his, and that was in person. Well, it was also in person, right. so it's even worse on the internet. You know what That's I'm saying? What I'm saying it's because even worse. It's, it's way worse on yeah, the internet yeah, yeah. because that that probably doesn't happen if it's inside of, because you just write something back and he goes, oh yeah, and he writes it back too because he doesn't see your eyes, he doesn't mm -hmm. feel the emotion. There's an mm -hmm. energy when you're talking to somebody. Listen, you and I have been having a conversation for the last 15, 20 minutes, right? And we understand each other. We're, we're friends, but we understand because there's a vibe and there's an energy yeah. that we're talking about. We understand that it's a serious conversation and everything too, but you don't pick that up because at the same time you're tweeting something out. Something else in your house could be going on. Right. Now, whether it's someone right. screaming at you right. or it's a dog biting at right. you and you're like, I don't have time for this. Eat right. shit. And then right. you walk away, right? And then like that's the type of stuff that people don't understand because it's just been synonymous with our life is this weapon that yeah. you now have in your hand it's 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 the fact that like on top of that too and this is why i keep saying keyboard warriors it's one of those things where i'm like if you this angry if you really about that life then put your money where you're like like i said it was a scenario where i was getting bullied enough i mean it took time because i was you know i was a teenager but i eventually was like enough and there was a physical element to it. There was no physical element of me just tweeting at you constantly no. to the point where, like, someone goes, and that's enough of that. And now all of a sudden this becomes a thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so course. there's there's a level of it's, again, it's not real. It's not real. And yeah. I think that that's, and, but again, and this is this is not, and I said it and I'll say it again, this is not directed at one particular group. This is, no. this is directed at everyone. There are many people that are on, that have the same beliefs as I do uh, that are terrible on the internet. There are people who have opposing views that are great on the internet. But there's a balance, and remember this, and I say this a million times, and I will say it again. The best person that you know in life, the best person, if you think of the, the best person that, that you know when you think of them, they have access to the internet. Now think of the worst person you ever met in your life or that you ever saw on television, the worst person, they have access to the internet. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. That is the problem. Um, mm -hmm. But look, we didn't talk about anything. Well, I, 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 I shouldn't say else? that. I shouldn't say no, that. No, we, we talked about Shield for a long time. Was there any other news? I, I mean, there might be. Time. Well, let's let's see let's see if we have anything else before we go. I just thought it was a pretty interesting conversation <laughs> to have overall. It was. Um, no, okay. Once we got started, I don't I don't blame it. Uh, let's see. Oh, Brendan Gleeson is going to be. Uh, I love Brendan Gleeson. So oh. he got. Cast in Joker, Folly cool. Adieu adds Harry Potter, and in Bruce Star, Brendan Gleeson for the musical sequel. I'm so curious what this musical sequel thing is. So Folly Adieu just made another impressive addition to its ensemble cast as Harry Potter and the Guard star Brendan Gleeson will start. Uh, he's also Braveheart man. Do you have you watch Braveheart yet? Mm -mm. Oh man! Before you leave here, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you that. Okay. Um, anyway, he's gonna start with La Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix. Deadline awesome. reports that Gleeson. I love him in in Brew. And he's in Bruges. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's in Bruges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's so amazing. he's so good in that, and he's great in everything. He's um, okay. Well, good. So he's coming back. So that's that's a casting news that we know. Dope. So deleted good. scene for so, Thor: Love and Thunder. Right, Interesting. Let's see what this is. Thor: Love and Thunder deleted scene sees the heroes encounter Zeus's other son. The first deleted scene from the upcoming Thor: Love and Thunder Blu-ray has been released, giving us a look at a moment featuring Zeus's other son that wound up on the cutting room floor. Following the digital debut next week, Thor Love and Thunder is set to be released on DVD and Blu-ray on September 27th. That is my daughter's birthday. Mm. And the first of four deleted scenes has now been shared online. In Looking for Zeus, we see Thor 
Korg and Valkyrie arrive at Omnipotent City, seeking an audience with Russell Crowe's lightning god. Instead, they run into his other son, Brett Goldstein's Hercules debuts in the mid credit scene, Dionysus, played by veteran stage and screen actor Simon Russell Beale. The hedonistic deity isn't particularly helpful, shrugging off Thor's request before leaving pre-orgy drinks. <laughs> right, it's another goofy scene. I mean, I'll probably find You'll probably it love funny. it. It's, yeah, it's yeah, probably some goof, goofy uh, yeah. Anything else before uh, we get out of here? I'm not sure. Let's see. Spider-Man No Way Home. It doesn't sound uh, like They're it. re-releasing it. You heard that, right? Um, on Spider-Man. Yes, I heard that, but let's mm-hmm. actually, we'll, let's end with this. Okay. This is a DC story here that I'd like to talk about. Um, It doesn't sound like potential new DC films boss, Dan Lin. That's something we haven't talked about. Dan Lin, who I remember back in the day, my friend Steve used to be his assistant. He was for Dan Lin. And um, and Dan Lin was a very big um, executive over at Warner Brothers, and now he's going to potentially be like the new Feige is what they're looking at. So he is the new DC films boss, and he made some comments about the Snyderverse fans that have caused quite a few people on social media to get very upset Find out what he had to say after the jump. I didn't hear this. I didn't either. All right. All signs point to Dan Lin taking charge of the DC Extended Universe in this new Warner Brothers Discovery era, and it certainly sounds like he's a fan. Very nearly handed the keys to the kingdom back in 2008 when he was overseeing George Miller's Justice League Mortal. Lin, and I was, I had just left at that point. Lin is clearly someone David Zoloft feel has the potential to be the DCEU's Kevin Feige. It's not likely he could deliver anything worse than the rocky journey we've spent the past decade embarking on, but it also appears Dan Lin might be the last person Zack Snyder fans will want to see jump to the top. Recently, we've been hearing rumblings that the current Warner Brothers regime is having serious regrets about giving it to fans and releasing the Snyder Cut on Justice League. The perception is the release the Snyder Cut campaign was made up of bots and bullies, and the movie debuting on HBO Max gave into a toxic fandom in a way that's made the situation worse, not better. This is forgetting the good many of those fans did, of course, but it, wait, this is forgetting the good many of those fans did? Oh, this is forgetting that the good, there were a lot of, there was a lot of good that many of the fans did, of course, but it appears Lynn has that same thought process. In a resurfaced interview with the Ankler Hot Seat podcast from early last month, the producer looked back at nearly being put, being put in charge of the DCEU, prompting the host to joke that it might have led to those crazy Snyderverse fans coming after him. Lynn responded by saying, Snyder enthusiasts are, are Autobots, suggesting that he's of the opinion that most of the filmmaker supporters are in fact paid for bots, something the Army of the Dead's Oscar win suggested may be the case to some degree. That's the other... That's the other chatter online that that Lynn really doesn't like. Right, so there's other chatter online that re, that Lynn really doesn't like Snyder. So the so those of you hoping that his Snyderverse will be restored, looking set to be m- majorly disappointed. It doesn't mean some familiar faces won't return, or that Lynn intends to fully reboot the franchise. We don't really know what he has planned, or if he's going to accept the job. Stay Interesting. tuned. Um, there's a lot to unpack. That, that's a, there's a lot to unpack there, and I know we're we're running long on the show. Um, well, first of all, what do you think about Dan Lin coming in? I mean, uh, based off of what I heard about him, I think that if, if if he can have that same vision as Feige, I think that's exactly what Warner needs right now. He was very respected when I was there. People, I remember him being like... He, where, where, where are we talking about? Warner Brothers. Oh, at Warner. He was okay, at Warner, so he's yeah. been at Warner this whole time. I don't know where he is now, but he was at Warner. He certainly was at Warner. That's what I said in 2008. I was, when I was there from 2004 until 2008, early, he, he was there. And... Um, and he was very respected, and he was like, and I always remember whether I was working for David Gambino or, or Eric Olson at the time, and it was like, if Dan Lin calls, you take the call, you do this, you, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, it's Dan Lin. Mm-hmm. So, and, mm-hmm. and so when Dan Lin was, it's funny, I reached out to my buddy Naveed, who's been on the show many times, and I was like, it's such a stupid text conversation, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> read this out. Because I wanted to see if I could get Dan on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Naveed's buddies with him. So, I, this, is, this is so stupid. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. There's gonna be a curse in here, so I want to. Re- I'm gonna warn everybody. Okay. So if your kid, if your kid is, if you are cleaning right now, and your kid's here, then and you've been warned. Um, here, this is this is it. Uh, okay. Hey, the big rumor. Oh wait, wait. Hey, I know you're close with Dan Lin. Have you talked to him recently? He's like, uh, well, I haven't spoken to him in a little bit. Well, what's going on? I said. Big rumor is that he's supposed to be the next Kevin Feige of DC, and there's rumors that he's taken, he's talking to them about running their entire division. I would love to interview him. He said, yeah, I know he is, but I'm not being a dick, but why would he hire you? 
And, and he <laughs> or said, why would he? Why would he <laughs> said, "Why would he hire you?" And I and then he said, "Oh wait, do you mean radio interview? Because if you want a job there, you got to sell yourself as a guy who knows everyone and everything." But do you mean for the show? And I said, "I don't want to work for those motherfuckers." <laughs> I said, "I want to interview the guy." And he wrote, "Ha ha ha!" And that was and that was and that was it. I got it. Okay, yeah. so not not interview for the job interview. Like he th- he thought you he meant thought I wanted to go in an interview funny. with him. That's I, funny. It was hilarious. That's and funny. I'm gonna dude. I'm gonna call him right now. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him the beat. I'm gonna tell him he's on the air and I'm gonna oh call him. Oh my the god, let's dude. See. Yeah. Let's see. He usually always picks up, so we'll see. I'm gonna talk to him. And Naveed will give us some good insight too about this too. Okay. See what he thinks. But I'm gonna let him know he's on the air. Unless he's doing something. I, that's why at this point anybody that I'm industry anybody with, I immediately go, Are you live? Yeah. Like oh, I, t- <laughs> I tell people right away. Oh, I guess he's doing something. He just texted me. All good. Let's see. Um yeah. All good. But okay, so to quickly answer your question yes, about please. about Lynn, um, if he has that that vision that Feige does and can and can really see a path and really paint it, it is what it is. And and for anybody to not I get it where they're saying that there was definitely not as many bots as like are being portrayed. But to pretend like there weren't some, I think, is willful. Well, Rolling Stone had that big yeah. interview, man, yeah, or a big I, report. And I, so, look, here's here's the thing. Snyder was a Snyder had a big, a very big presence at Warner Brothers back even back then, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. I remember I wasn't three hundred done through Warner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he had he had absolutely it was he was another one. I remember I was working for uh, oh, when I was temping. God, who was it? Shh. Oh my God, Jeff, uh, not Robin off. Oh my God, I can't remember Silverman. Mm. Silverman was another one of the big guys there, and I and I was on his desk a couple of different times. when I was temping, and I was taking phone calls at one point. And I remember he's another one, Zack Snyder or his wife calling. That goes through immediately, right? Mm-hmm. So it was very important, mm-hmm. obviously very respected. But I don't know how him and Dan Lin got along back then. Mm-hmm. And I know that it was it was Silverman that dealt with him a lot of the time. So maybe it was Silverman that liked him, and maybe maybe Dan Lin didn't like him, right? Maybe they had some beef back in the day. I don't know. It's all possible. But I think that what I will say is this. If they're going to give Dan Lin a job, whether you – it's very similar to what we were just talking about with, like, the She-Hulk thing. Whether you like him or not, or if you're part of the Snyderverse movement or not, mm-hmm. you got to respect that this is not a guy who's backing down from anybody. This is a guy, And this no. is a guy who's going to go, look, this is the way I feel about it. You don't like me? Then don't watch my stuff. And it is your right to say, well, I don't like what you said, and I'm not going to watch it because – it's weird to me because they say they're not doing the Snyder verse anymore. Mm-hmm. And even though they say they're going to have other characters, you are essentially continuing the Snyder verse because if Ben Affleck comes, is coming back in mm-hmm. Aquaman, Shazam, all these things that are still happening, mm-hmm. it's still the Snyder verse to, to an extent. Yeah. It's just not the continuation of the story he was telling. Right. Like you're not going to get all the stuff from right. Justice League. That's not right. going to continue on. So maybe it's more of a clear cut thing of them saying, look, we're not continuing his story, mm-hmm. but the Snyderverse, the stuff that he created, this that, like, and especially if Henry Cavill comes back, yeah. I don't know if you can say that. Yeah, it it becomes it becomes definitely hard, and I think the, the problem is a lot of those castings are kind of perfect castings. Like I don't yeah. know, I can't, I can't. I, I mean, there Man might be there might be there might be somebody that I just don't know about yeah. yet, but yeah. I can't think of anybody other than Henry that isn't that that isn't perfect for that. Yep. Um. I think it's one of those things, like, if we're just being fully honest, like, regardless of how you feel about the Snyderverse, there is just so much taint in this era. Um, just, like, so much um, baggage in yeah. this era. Yeah. You you kind of have to move on. Well, 100% you have to move on. There's, yeah. no, there's, there's no doubt about it. And I think that there's a lot that... I think that what what happens is when you I think Warner Brothers what they thought was going to happen remember there's different regimes that were in charge too mm-hmm. but a lot of things what they thought was going to happen was that they thought okay if we do this then then these fans that wanted they're going to be so appreciative and that's not how the world works mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. what they want what the fans wanted whether some of them were bots they certainly weren't there was a lot of people who were very passionate absolutely about it. absolutely and, and those people were going to go well cool can't you give this movie now give us our guy and let our guy do the thing. That's what they wanted. And that's not what Warner Brothers was willing to give. It's a, it's a give a mouse a cookie scenario. Yeah. It was one of those things that like, 
if they had never done, people would still be clamoring, but it is what it, the minute you kind of gave this film, they were like, oh, keep going. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? But isn't that also their right to say that? Of because course. it was a really good movie. And it's like, so they're like, if, if, I would see myself on like let's say the Star Wars wise if there was that Trevorrow cut maybe they actually did film that thing mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and then they shot it and it was all done and then they and I was like let's let's release I now I do think that there's a way that you can do it without attacking everybody like, because people got really vicious really vicious and continued in and would go after people like this is the stupidest thing that happened like I remember at one point when when I, was, I think it was Collider Live and someone had asked me about the Snyder cut and I think I said something like uh, I said I don't care right mm-hmm. And then it came out to be when I found out it was a little more real. If you look at SCN, and SCN Live and all that type of stuff, when you look at it, I was like, and this is way before they even announced it, and people were talking about it. And I was like, if it exists, you should put it out. And, just, and, and I also didn't know all the stuff about Snyder and his daughter and all these mm-hmm, things. Mm-hmm. But I said that one thing on Clara Live. Oh, there were videos made. There were things like, and, all, and he said, oh, but you remember you said you didn't care. I'm like, yeah, but I didn't know all the facts. I didn't know everything yeah, yeah, at the yeah. time. Yeah. I said I didn't care, and it, and it, it was like this. It's like again going back to what we just talked about. <laughs> it's this political movement thing that starts to happen, and it's like I'm tired, Christian. I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah, it's just tired. I get it, but it's like, but it's, but but the thing is, but what I say to that is, I do think that there, even though a lot of particular ways that things could come off as toxic, and I get it. Mm. I think it was a good fight to be fought because mm. I also think that this was a guy that lost his daughter mm. in a tragic way, and was. Removed from a project, the movie is significantly better Absolutely. than what came out. Now, could it have been a theatrical release? No, it's a four-hour film. Absolutely not. But it was meant to be watched the way it was, and it was fantastic. I loved the movie. If they were going to do it, that you you go you go Matrix Reloaded Revelations, um, um, in the sense that you split it into two movies. You really you re, or or even Infinity War Endgame. You're like, "Great, here is part 1 of Zack Snyder's Justice League and then 3 to 5 months later yeah, here's part 2." Yeah, yeah, if you want if you if you did it that way, but I mean again, at the by, by by the time that they get there, it's just too late, but they do this they they spend an extra 70 million to do right. it. And that's probably what probably right. bites them in the butt, especially in the amount of debt that they're in at the right. moment. So that's right. probably why they're also a little scorned and it and it didn't let there are times that it looked like Snyder would say like okay let's do okay everybody behind me go that way it right. looked like he did that sometimes right. and there's other times when he did it where he would say and he and he used it for any kind of called out some of the toxicity sometimes too so it's a slippery slope I do agree with you I think for Snyder I think for everybody else it's good for him to move move on but the other thing that people don't realize and I said this on Campia show the other day is that people are wondering like because Burnett brought up and he said he goes okay look why don't all these people then follow him if they love him so much? Why don't they follow him over to Netflix? I'm like, because they were DC fans first. Mm-hmm. They, there was a leader that came in, and, there, and to them, he was the chosen one, and he mm-hmm. was the guy. And, but they're DC fans, so they mm-hmm. want to see their property thrive. Absolutely. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to follow him over to wherever he goes. Absolutely. They might, but it does, it's not likely. Because I, I think the other part of it, too, is who, like you said, as far as DC fans, who has truly tackled DC previously and like killed it and in their mind he killed it yeah. like you you like obviously you could say you know richard donner and everything he did with superman it did very different though was, uh, was, no, 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 um yeah. you could say tim burton you yeah. know what he was doing so yeah. there there are moments where you could look at it and go no no no, so and so did but not to the realm of dc fans wanted their universe the way marvel got yeah. theirs yeah and and they would and they didn't want but they didn't want them to copy it and it was oh, no, no, no 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 yeah I agreed and warner brothers was trying to do that and warner brothers said well all right well we want to we want to do this we want to do that and snyder said well i want to do it my way and the fans supported him and i think that they were right to support him but i don't know i don't know how much um is true about the bot stuff and i didn't really dive into that that rolling stone article did you uh, I, wa- I read the whole thing. I didn't really do any kind of follow-up to it. I think it's one of those situations where we're probably looking at a two things can be true at the same time. Right. I right. think that Zack Snyder probably did do some of that bot stuff, but I also think that there's not nearly enough recognition for genuine fans that just wanted to see this happen. For and sure. I, think, I think that's the problem. The same angry people we've been talking about on the internet – they see, see, I told you the bots. And like, see, I told you they were just out to get everybody immediately is like, I have proof now that you just don't want to hear my side. And there's also proof, by the way, like, yes, there are a lot of people out there and a lot of channels that just want to 
be we're the Snyderverse and we hate your guts and no matter what I'm going to make videos of you make fun of you and do all that there's there's that pocket of people there are a lot of really good people who wanted that movie and that fought for that movie mm-hmm. and fought for Snyder and did it in a way that was I thought not toxic and they're not, it's not very similar to what we were just talking about before it's not fair to lump them into that because they all because now now the way you look at it you're like I'm a Snyderverse fan is like oh you're toxic that's that's not that's not true the reason why is though is that negativity and 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 uh, malice and hate is tends to be louder and more powerful and, and, sometimes and good I don't know if necessarily overall on the internet, on the internet. Uh, on the internet yes on the internet yes um, but it, it just tends to be louder yes it, it's 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 you know, these are not the droids you're looking for versus force lightning. Right. It's one right. is flashier, right. one right. does a little. They're both pretty dangerous depending on how you use it or like True. powerful. But one is a lot flashier than the other. Look, this conversation was was pretty great. I enjoyed it. I yeah. liked it. It's a very different capes and cows, but hey, that's what we do here. So I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you for Winston A. Marshall for joining us as well. Make sure you check him out on TikTok and Twitter and everywhere that you can find Winston A. Marshall. Um, if you didn't already. Please head on over, by the way, to um, the Big Things Clips channel. We got stuff going on over there. The Patreon, patreon.com slash the big thing show. All the new tiers are on there. Rewatches, Q&As, Schmoes, no stuff. Check out all the, P- the tiers that we got. And PLD's in there talking to people all the time. I'm in there talking to people all the time. Going to be very active. And if you want to support the show, that's how you can do it. Uh, all right. So. What else? We got some. Um, oh yeah, and then if you if you are looking at that Amazon link, it's in the description. Again, if you do anything, if you send anything, please put a note so I can thank you on the show. All right, everybody, thanks again. I appreciate you for everything, and let's build this thing out together. It is the road to seventy thousand, everybody. Let's do it. It's the big thing. It's capes and cows. Peace out. Hey.